Hello, I'm Shi Jie Xu from University of Liverpool. I would like to give you a brief introduction on our recent work, Statistical Consistent Term Structures are Flat. It is a joint work with my supervisor, Paul Kruhana from WU Vienna. In this talk, we are looking at the modeling of energy futures. We follow the HGM approach and we will work under the euro assumption of risk neutral in the model. Electricity forward traded in the real world are contracts prescribed power and delivery time interval in the future. We denote by FT capital T1 capital T2, the discounted price as time T of a forward contract delivering one unit of energy with equal delivery rate over the time interval, capital T1 to capital T2. Similar to the HGM model for money markets, the instantaneous forward price FT capital T is a price at time T of a forward contract delivering one unit of energy instantly at time T. We also stress that this artificial price typically only exists in the model. The price at time T of a forward contract delivering one unit of energy from capital T1 to capital T2 is the average forward during the delivery period. Throughout this, war, this talk, we will transfer uh, HGM equations into Mosella parametrizations equations. That is, we observe uh, the price for instantaneous delivery futures in time to maturity rather than time of maturity. We like to prescribe the possible curves which we can see in the market in an as simple as possible mathematical way. The simplest but somewhat generic method of prescribing possible curves is to see that we have a family of possible curves indexed by some element y. We will further assume that y lies in Rd. For each point of time t and each scenario omega, we see a curve and find the corresponding random parameter yt. Finally, we will assume that y is an eto process as well. This is a regular definition of FDR. Basically, we simply assume Y to be a finite dimensional diffusion. We use the following notion of risk neutral. The first condition is to ensure Ito's formula can be applied. The second condition ensures that the discounted futures with delivery periods are martingales under the pricing measure. If we assume both Rn and FDR, then we get conditions for the drift of the process G, which results in an equation as follows. Let's recall a famous result of FDR diffusion models for money markets. Instead of using the drift condition, which is suitable for energy markets, it's suitable to use interest rate HGM drift condition for interest rate markets. Filipovic and Techman show that FDR diffusion models for money markets under this te technical 
assumptions have foliations. That is basically one has a five representations. After this famous result, we present an easy but important one dimensional example as follows. The curve is defined in this way, and we discuss it in a Hilbert space equipped with a scalar product as this, which has been discussed in Filipovic's book. We can prove that Rn and FDR conditions hold while the curve is not affine. Moreover, we embed the manifold into a Hilbert space and show that the constructed process is a solution to the SPDE. We present an example with a one-dimensional manifold, which is not a flat. That is, the vector space generated by the manifold is infinity dimensional. Then we have two important remarks. Filipovic and Tegman's result for money markets does not hold for energy markets. RN and FDR models do not need to be affine. However, we can see the example above only works with Rn under the condition that the volatility square is one. It's not a good thing. The example above gives us some intuition on energy futures modeling. Then we introduce the statistical consistency condition. Basically, we say that statistical consistency condition for a given function G means that for every possible constant volatility, there is a ETO process with a given volatility, which will lead to an RN model if we take it into the curve. This is motivated from the fact that we would like to estimate the volatility from data and our model should work with whatever volatility we get out of the estimator. Before presenting our main result, we recall quasi exponential functions. It's defined as follows, and further details can be found in Bill York's paper. Next, we present our main result. If we assume Rn and Scc, then there is a quasi exponential function C from R to R, a function U with quasi exponential function as its components, and a C2 function A which vanish at zero, such that Gxy equals to Cx plus Ux times Ay. Recall that we didn't make direct structural assumptions on G and that the parameters Y might appear anywhere if G is seen as a function of X. Our main result, however, shows that if we take SCC into our assumptions, Y can only have an affine-like effect on G. Under this structure, it is known that G as a function of X has very specific form. This reduces the class of possible parametrized curves tremendously. Part of our references are listed here. That's it. All. Oh, thank you.